Und wir haben als nächsten Science Slammer den Gewinner vom Fame Lab Schweiz 2016. Er ist ursprünglich in Kairo geboren, aber arbeitet gerade in Lausanne. Bitte begrüßen Sie ganz herzlich Osama Galaf. Und ab jetzt muss ich auch mein Hirn noch mal einsetzen, denn ich muss jetzt auf Englisch und Deutsch gleichzeitig moderieren. Er wird seinen Vortrag jetzt auf Englisch halten, weil er ist ein Gedächtnisexperte. So from now on, I will try to moderate you, I'll be the MC both in German and English. Thank you. So you are one of the memory experts and let's also welcome him with a warm applause, with a warm hand. Please, another applause for Samakala. So he currently works at the uh, Ecole Polytechnique Fédérale de Lausanne, uh, Swiss Federal Institute in Lausanne, of, of, technology, of technology in Lausanne, um, works at the Brain Mind Institute, and his talk, you already see, is called Memory Mashup. So if you're ready, I will count in with <coughs> three to one. Uh, you can also count in English, right? <laughs> okay, so we count in together with three to one. I say science, you say slam. Are you ready, Osama? I'm ready. Okay. We count in together. Three, two, one. Science! Before I start, I'd like to thank all the organizers for the great effort and for inviting me over, and of course, for my colleagues, the other slammers. Have you ever had a very bad memory, a traumatic one, like an accident or maybe a harsh breakup that you would like to get rid of without affecting other memories you cherish. Can I see show of hands, please? Well, as expected, so many of you. So could I please ask you <laughs> to look here <laughs> and for all the others who didn't raise their hands, kindly close your eyes. <laughs> But wait a minute here. Is it really possible that we can get rid of memories or is it just crazy notion from sci-fi movies? Well, before I answer this question, let me first take you through the process of how memory researchers, including myself, study memory. There are different types of memories, but we mostly care about emotional memories because simply if you combine an emotion to a memory, it burns into your brain and can literally persist with you throughout your entire life. Emotions like happiness, <laughs> sadness, <laughs> or maybe fear. <laughs> so let's take fear as an example because it's very easy to induce in the lab. And to do so, we bring our daily collaborators, the lab animals. We put these lab animals into a chamber or a box. This box they have never been into before. So as a first response, They like to explore it moving everywhere. But after a while, we give them a very weak electric shock in this box. That it's mild, but enough though to make them associate that this box is harmful for them. So as every single time you bring them back into the box, they remember that the box is harmful and they refuse to move and they freeze out of fear. Great. Now we have successfully created a fear memory. Is it possible that we can get rid of it Well, it turns out that amongst the known treatments, there is an exposure-based therapy where you have to confront your fears to be able to get rid of it. And this is exactly what we do with the lab animals. So we bring them back into the box. Initially, they remember that the box is harmful and they refuse to move and they freeze. But when we bring them back into the box several sessions a day for many consecutive days, the fear tends to go down. That's known as fear extinction. Unfortunately, this fear extinction training is unsuccessful if the animals are not receiving it for a period of time. So if you put them back into the box, they, they freeze again, what's, called, what's known as spontaneous recovery of the fear. But the good news here is, in my own lab, we are using a specific drug. This drug enhances the extinction learning. And if the animals are taking this drug while they are doing the extinction training, 
the fear never comes back again. So in conclusion, and to come back to my first question, with this approach, we believe that it's quite possible to get rid of traumatic memories. And for all of you who've raised your hands in the beginning, hoping to get rid of your own traumatic memories, don't worry at all. Soon, we will have the means to. <laughs> what if? What if you planned for the biggest robbery ever? And while ordering the banker to fill your bags with the money, you suddenly realized that your mask is still around your neck. <laughs> that would be rather embarrassing, right? <laughs> so you quickly pull it over your face. And then you look for your gun to discover that you, oops, forgot it where your accomplice was waiting for you outside in the car. <laughs> At that point, that's an utter failure. This is not a joke. It happened in real life in Auckland, New Zealand. Where the people and the banker were giggling, <laughs> giving the money to the robber, who, by the way, got arrested with his accomplice two hours later after fleeing with the money. So, what happened to our incompetent robber here, here is called absent mindedness, where you simply forget what you initially planned for. But sometimes, forgetting to remember is by far better than recalling a memory that never happened. Allow me to explain. In 1975, Melbourne, Australia, a lady got raped, but she gave a vivid description of the perpetrator to the police, leading them to his door. When they arrested the guy, he had a bulletproof alibi. It turned out that this guy is the psychology professor Donald Thompson, and at the same exact time, when the crime took place, he was on live TV, being interviewed by a police commissioner <laughs> discussing memory distortions. <laughs> so what really happened, while she was watching this show, the real rapist broke into her place and did what he did, and she mistakenly developed a false memory. So now, if you think that developing a false memory is something infrequent in nature or exclusive to people with memory impairment, maybe you should think again of how many times you were dead sure of switching off the lights or the TV at your place, and then when you return back, you find that they are still on. Research has shown that there is no correlation whatsoever between your degree of certainty about a specific memory and this memory being true. <laughs> so the bottom line here is we all do create false memories on a daily basis. Mostly about trivial things, but if in a courtroom and your own life is on the line because of one of them, then we have to pay more attention to this matter. In the States, there are around 300 people who were convicted based on a false memory of a witness. And after spending up to 30 years behind bars, they were proven innocent by DNA testing. That's quite alarming. And that's why a lot of memory researchers are dedicating their efforts to study false memories in the lab. But before I tell you how we do so, let me maybe do a simple exercise with you. I'll read out loud two word lists, and then I'll ask you a couple of questions afterwards. The first word list. Candy, sour, sugar, bitter, good, taste, tooth, nice, honey, soda, chocolate, heart, cake, tart, pie. The second word list. Mad, wrath, fear, hate, fight, rage, hatred, temper, mean, fury, ire, emotion, enrage. So now please raise your hand if you remember that the word sweet was on the first word list. Keep your hands up, please. Now raise your other hand if you remember that the word anger was on the second word list. Now look to each other. This is exactly how they induce a false memory in the lab, because neither of these words was on either of these lists. <laughs> So in the lab, after the volunteers take the very same exercise like you did, they go inside a big brain scanner. This brain scanner can precisely measure the brain activation. And it turns out that the brain region responsible for hearing shows a very low activation upon the recall of a false memory, like the word sweet, which was not on the list, when compared to the recall, the activation due to the recall of a true memory, like the word nice, which was on the list. So my take-home message here is, 
By further developing this approach, it's quite possible to have a memory accuracy detector that can filter memories, true from phony. And since not all cases have evidence that's used for, for DNA testing, this approach could definitely save lots of innocent lives in the courtroom. Thank you.